what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1989 Dodge Shadow ES Turbo. Up front is a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four. Down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Dodge Shadow because I think this is just the epitome of the 80s. It has a red interior, it has a turbocharger, and it's something that we don't see on the road anymore. And so that is why I'm so excited to share it with you. I've also driven two Shadow convertibles here on the channel. If you'd like to check out those videos at the end of this one but this is going to be something special but if you would like to submit your own vehicle you can head on over to my website zachpradle.com submit it's a quick and easy submission form it takes under a minute to fill out and i come out to you but let's get back to that 2.5 liter turbo under the hood in 1993 they offered the turbo and the v6 but then the V6 just replaced the turbo. So this was a relatively short-lived setup. The Shadow was a short-lived vehicle as a whole. It never got a second generation, but it makes about 150 horsepower, which might be laughable in modern standards, especially because the modern Mazda 3 turbo has the same displacement and yet makes more horsepower. The GR Corolla has almost half the displacement and makes twice the power. But in the 1980s, turbos were a new technology to passenger vehicles. You really didn't see it much before the 80s. And when you did see it in the 80s, they were very unique. They made a big point of it being a turbo, which is why you'll see it up on the hood. Like I said, Paradu, it is a three-speed automatic, which I don't love, but also this particular car has a shift kit on it, so it is shifting even harder than a normal Shadow would shift. But still, any Chrysler transmission from the 90s, I don't trust farther than I can throw it, so I don't love that there. But you could find Shadows with the manual transmission, and I have driven that, and that was quite lovely. Last but not least, the Shadow Turbo is front-wheel drive. So how does it feel to drive a Dodge Shadow Turbo? Well, it is zippy. It's quick. It's a little car, so the 150 horsepower ain't too shabby. I mean, the Miata was making, well, the Miata was in its first model year, so it had the 1.6, so it was making about 110 horsepower, maybe 105-ish. So it's right up there in terms of power, but the chassis definitely does not keep up with the power. You can tell it's an economy car with a big mouth, but that does keep it kind of fun. And it does feel like a smaller pocket-sized Dodge Daytona, of which I've driven a Pacifica Turbo, and it feels like a smaller version of that. So that is kind of unique. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have five gauges. Off to the left is my battery voltage and speedometer. In the center is the fuel. And off to the right is my tachometer and coolant temperature. The steering wheel doesn't have anything on it, not even an airbag. This is pre-airbag era. And off to the left, we have a climate vent and our headlight switch. Moving on to the door, manual mirrors, manual locks, and manual windows. However, we get this really nice red burgundy fabric that I absolutely love. I feel like I'm in a smoking lounge, which I personally think is sweet. Moving into the center, two climate vents and our boost gauge, along with some warning lights. Absolutely love that it gets a boost gauge. Then we have our rear defrost, which is interesting. It's not just a button. It says rear defrost and then on or off, and then it says fog lamps on or off. This could have been simplified to be two buttons, but Dodge decided to make it four for whatever reason. Down below that, we do have our air conditioning and heating options. This is a factory AC car, and it still works here today, which is wonderful. And then we have our radio. This is very, very 80s. It does have a cassette player, but it has volume and tune and all these buttons. I really, really like the look of this radio. I think it's pretty freaking cool. Then we do have an ashtray and cigarette lighter and a big cubby. However, no cup holders here in the ES Turbo Shadow. So unfortunately, yet incredibly predictably, it fails the big freaking bottle test. <laughs> then we have the shifter, very, very 80s slash 90s. Nothing really crazy about it, but it's chunky, it's plastic and it's here. Then we get another cubby and we get the center console. And then we'll talk about the seats. The seats are, you guessed it, burgundy. And they're very comfortable and they say shadow stitched into the headrest. I think overall, just on seats alone, this is such a cool aesthetic. I'm very, very happy with it and I'm comfortable. However, I assume the comfort will end there because we do have back seats. So let's go get into the back and do a back seat review. Oh boy. Ugh. 
Okay. All right. We're in the... Oh, the, the door's closing. Oh, maybe not. We're in the back of the 1989 Dodge Shadow ES Turbo. And this is my first time in the back of the hardtop. I've only ever sat in the back of convertibles. And honestly, I feel like I have more space back here than in the convertibles, which might make sense, but that's just how I feel. We get these nice big windows, which is fantastic as well. We do get seat belts, shoulder belts, which wasn't standard at the beginning of the 80s, but became standard. Other than that, nothing really too crazy, but the burgundy carries on back here. The stripes on the seats carries on back here, and it's just a really cool place to be. Crammed, wouldn't want to sit back here on the way to Cuyahoga Falls National Park, but for a little bit, I could definitely do it. Let's hop into the very back and take a quick look at the trunk, which is a hatch and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the Shadow ES Turbo keyhole here, and I didn't realize that it is, in fact, a hatchback. So the rear glass comes up with the trunk. Never really realized that, kind of cool. Anyway, once we are back here, obviously we have old car stuff to keep it on the road, but we do have this leather bag so this giant leather bag actually came with the car so you can remove the sunroof and put it in the leather bag when you want the sunroof out. So it's not a power sunroof. You pop it up and then pull it out. It's extremely hard to get back in, so I'm not going to touch it. But that's what the bag was for in the trunk. Very cool. Other than that, nothing really too crazy right home about. You do get this little privacy cover thing, but that's pretty much it. And those back seats do fold flat if you do need to load stuff in here. So you can actually move quite a bit of storage space in the back of the Shadow ES Turbo, which is lovely to see. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I love the look of the Dodge Shadow ES Turbo. I think it looks like a little pocket racer, and that's exactly what it is. It drives like that. It is a fun little pocket rocket of the 1980s. Now, of course, by modern standard, a brand new Corolla would walk this thing, and I'm not talking GR, I'm saying like the base two liter, but it at least looks the part. It looks like something that I would have on my shelf for on a poster as a kid, so that is definitely cool to see. However, I do wanna note the chipping paint found all around the vehicle. This was very, very typical of 90s white paint. GM also suffered from this issue quite a bit, and it was only the white colors. I don't know if the GM and Dodge issue are the same, but I know from the GM issue, it was something in the bonding that the paint wouldn't stick as well to the metal as other colors would. So if you ever see like a 96 Chevy Lumina that's white, odds are it's missing big chunks of its paint. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving the 1989 Dodge Shadow ES Turbo? Well, I've driven a lot of Shadows here on the channel so far, and I've liked all of them. The feeling is gonna be the same. What I really enjoy about this car is that it is a basic base model car, or economy car. It's small, and it was affordable, but it's not joyless. This car is so entertaining, so fun to drive for what it is, that it was cool that Dodge offered this. Now, if you want serious giggles out of a Dodge product, you're looking at $50,000 in a scat pack, $60,000, $70,000. They don't really have a basic offering that would offer the smiles per gallon like this did. Another car that Chrysler made that did that was the PT Cruiser as well. They did the GT Touring. That was a turbocharged four-cylinder PT Cruiser. That was another thing in the 2000s. But ever since the financial crisis of 08, having fun in a car, at least in terms of Dodge, is reserved for those that can make high payments. That's a wealthy thing. Fun has been relegated to the rich. And that just wasn't the case in 1989. If you had a couple bucks laying around, could make a $100, $200 car payment, boom, here you go, Dodge Shadow ES Turbo. And that's what always draws me to these cars. They seem happy, they seem fun, and it seemed like in the 80s, automakers were enjoying what they were producing. Now, it's just building EVs to comply with the government. But it wasn't the case back here in 1989. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Carl and Mark for letting me take out this ES Turbo Dodge Shadow. I've reviewed so many of their cars in the past. 
Mark and Carl are absolutely fantastic to work with, great assets to the channel, and good friends as well. You can find Carl's YouTube channel in the description below. He has some really cool videos about all this stuff as well, so definitely go and check that out. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.